Welcome back, I'm Ben Simmons, a first year medical resident, slowly recovering from COVID-19. If you haven't seen my video where I first talked about getting testing positive and getting COVID-19, definitely go check that out now. In this video, I'll be talking about some of my concerns about the long-term side effects of COVID-19, how long I'll be infectious, and when I'll get back to normal life. So what symptoms do I still have? I definitely still have a little bit of loss in taste and smell, and I know this because eating is one of my favorite things, so I definitely can notice when things taste a little bit less intense than I'm used to. Also, I still have a little bit of a stuffy nose and I'm definitely noticing a little bit of fatigue throughout the day, wanting to take naps in the middle of the day and needing a little extra caffeine to get me through. So I went for my first run yesterday and let me tell you, the first 100 feet were okay, but as soon as I finished that, the struggle hit me like a ton of bricks in the face. I thought I was not gonna be able to make it to finish my run. It was terrible, one of the worst feelings. I definitely had to slow it down a little bit uh, take my time with it, slowly make it through that mile. Eventually I did, it was one of the hardest miles I probably ran in my life, drenched in sweat at the end, felt like I just ran 10 miles. But on the positive side, this morning went for another run. It was much better, made it through, still with a little bit of that chest tightness, uh, but definitely felt much better and felt comfortable about getting back into the routine of exercise. The next thing I got concerned about though was seeing these reports that exercise after getting testing positive for COVID may actually have long-term effects on your heart. In a study done at Ohio State, they looked at athletes who had COVID-19 infections who were either asymptomatic or had mild to moderate symptoms and they did what's called a cardiac MRI on these athletes afterwards to see if there was any damage done to the heart from the COVID-19 virus. It ended up being that 15% of these athletes had some type of evidence showing that they could have possibly had myocarditis or inflammation of the heart at some point prior to their, or some point after their COVID-19 infection. One of my big concerns was if these elite D1 athletes are finding damage to their heart after getting COVID-19, what's gonna happen to me? Someone who considers himself in shape but is nowhere near a D1 athlete, what's gonna happen to my heart? Um, so luckily we know, or what we think from these studies is that returning to intense strenuous exercise shortly after getting COVID-19 infection increases your risk for myocarditis. So though athletes tend to be much healthier, especially when it comes to their cardiovascular health. Uh, we know that returning to intense exercise increases the risk. So the average person is less likely to return to strenuous exercise. However, in my case, when I'm running these miles, I have to make sure that I'm taking it easy like I did and not trying to push myself too much to increase my risk of having any heart damage from this COVID-19. Otherwise, I'm gonna make sure to pay attention to my symptoms. If I'm having that pain or tightness in the chest, Definitely take it easy, and if I'm noticing over time chest pain, shortness of breath that's getting worse, I'm gonna have to go into the hospital and get that checked out. Another thing I'm worried about is this long COVID syndrome that we've been hearing about. And what exactly is long COVID syndrome? It's just a combination of all the possible symptoms that can linger on for quite some time after a COVID infectious, after you're no longer infectious or contagious, but still they're going to continue to bother you. Now, some of those symptoms that we've commonly seen is fatigue, loss of taste and smell, some shortness of breath, and these can go on for weeks to months after your COVID infection. And we don't really know yet what, who is more likely to have these long COVID symptoms and who aren't. Now we have some evidence over the last 20 years with the SARS and Ebola viruses that also had like long virus syndromes where people were having symptoms after their infections had cleared. And these symptoms at that time include some psychiatric symptoms like depression, um, almost post-traumatic stress disorder from having these viruses, as well as lingering fatigue. And in these populations, we saw that some of them lasted up to four years long, though most people were in that six weeks to six months range. My next big question or concern was how long am I gonna be infectious? How long am I at risk of giving my friends, family, loved ones the COVID-19 virus? 
The last thing I would want to do is cause anyone to have to go through the same symptoms or risk spreading this virus further in the community. So to go over this, I want to go over a few basic vocabulary words. The first is exposure. Exposure is the time when you are first in contact with the COVID-19 virus that caused you to get infected. The next word is incubation period. The incubation period is the time that it takes for the virus to multiply from your initial exposure until you notice symptoms. The next word is infectious. To be infectious is what we commonly know to be contagious. It is the time that I can pass on the COVID-19 virus from myself to others around me. In my case, I don't know exactly what my exposure or when my exposure was, but I do know the date of the start of my symptoms. So I can estimate that if I go back three, four days before I notice my symptoms, that would probably estimates when my exposure was. We can look at this graph and see that from the time I was exposed to the virus and the time I started having symptoms, the amount of virus in my body was beginning to multiply. And at the beginning of that time, I wasn't yet infectious or contagious. The viral load was just too small at that time for me, able, for me to be able to give the virus to anyone. However, we can see that that pink line is an estimated time at which the virus load started to become high enough that I can start to infect other people. But we can also see that the time I began to be infectious was still before my symptoms. So that's why we say when we're going out in the world and dealing with COVID-19, it's important that we don't just think about when we're having symptoms because we can be contagious before we have symptoms. If we look at this next graph from Nature, which is the, one of the most highly respected journals in the world, we can see that between six days before your symptoms and eight days after your symptoms are most likely when you're to be contagious based on the amount of virus in your body. So am I still infectious? I'm day 14 after my positive test. I'm about 17 days after my first time of symptoms. So by any type of mathematical method that we follow, the likelihood that I'm infectious is very, very low. It's almost safe to say I'm not still infectious at this point, although nothing in science is guaranteed. So we'll just say the likelihood is very low that I'm still infectious. And the last big question is, when should I get vaccinated now that I've had the COVID-19 infection and I'm recovering. So the current guidelines state that you shouldn't get the vaccine while you still have an active COVID infection. And we know that getting a COVID infection likely gives you immunity around 90 days after your infection. So essentially the answer to that question is, I'm going to get vaccinated after all of my symptoms are gone, but before 90 days from my first day of having COVID-19 to ensure that I have continued immunity from COVID-19, reduce the risk of complications from myself and reduce the risk of me possibly spreading it to anybody in the community. Thank you for checking up on me. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to see what life is like as I head back to work in the hospital.